So right now you are on Arch, and you've been on there for like yeah three years. So you're on, you were saying before you're on vanilla GNOME. Yeah, I'm using vanilla GNOME with probably two or three extensions to blur my background and to uh, to, to change the color of, of the top bar. But other extent, but other experience is pretty pretty much vanilla. Okay, okay. So what is the uh, vanilla GNOME experience like? Because a lot of pe- I, I've used it a little bit in like virtual machines, right? <laughs> I I I I've maybe used it for like a couple of hours, but, and uh-huh. that was like a couple of years back. A lot of people say they rely on extensions, like, you know, dash to dock and things like that. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Well, the experience really depends because um, the experience is pretty smooth, but uh, except that you have some minor inconveniences, minor problems happening from time to time. Mm-hmm. And the, the biggest problem with that in minor inconvenience is that you can't really tell what's causing them. I mean. Uh, you have a new update, you have a little bit uh, sort of stutter happening when you press super key on your keyboard and you have to pinpoint what causes it because it might be a part of GNOME, it might be caused by a a problematic extension, it might be caused by the AMD GPU, (laughs) it might be caused by whatever, or it might be caused by NVIDIA drivers. Uh, Mm -hmm. So uh, my rule of thumb, I have to wait for a week. (laughs) If the problem disappears by itself, it means that it was part of a new update mm-hmm. it was a problem caused by the new update and if not if it if it doesn't go away i try to dis- disable my extensions manually and usually it works usually. <laughs> but otherwise <laughs> usually uh nine of nine times out of ten mm-hmm. but um other otherwise uh it works great again i'm using it as my main production machine and it works really great mm-hmm. what uh what drew you to gnome i'm sorry what what like brought you to GNOME? What like what appealed to? Ah you? well, uh, the ah uh, when when people talk about when people argue what's better, Hyperland or KDE or GNOME, they often have some sort of arguments like oh KDE is 20 percent faster or uh, Hyperland allows you to tile things. It's not about me. I use GNOME because I I really like the way it looks. I just like the aesthetics of GNOME. I just like the minimal the. Uh, blank look of it it's just it, it's really minimal you, you want to have a top bar and that's it mm-hmm. so i kind of like that i kind of like that it looks different from windows mm-hmm. it was part of uh, of the i think it's part of that personality trait that we that we uh, told, talked about before because um when i think about operating systems when i think about windows it sounds familiar to me but the minimal look of gnome the way gnome looks it's sort of it sort of it looks a bit alien to me, you mm. know. So it makes it like a clearly different thing in your mind. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I like it. Right, I have heard that as like a one of the reasons not to recommend something like Cinnamon or like Zorin OS things like that because they're very similar looking to Windows. So you might fall <laughs> into traps of thinking that it is Windows yeah. and trying to do things yeah. in a Windows way. Yeah, but that's uh, it works. It works uh, both two ways. I mean, uh, when when I recommend Linux Mint to my friends, I recommend it to them because I know that they will be able to find a way around it. Right. Because if you use vanilla GNOME uh, and Tweaks Tweaks application isn't installed, you have no way to change the uh, to change keyboard layout to switch languages. What? So. In GNOME settings, there is no option to change a shortcut to switch language. You cannot change the shortcut to switch languages, to to, to switch inputs, without GNOME Tweaks utility. Okay, sure. So so when you recommend uh, vanilla GNOME to your friend and he is asking how to to switch an input layout, you have to, by default, you have to press super plus uh, space Mm -hmm. to switch languages, and everyone is used to Alt-Shift. So uh, right. when you when you recommend vanilla gnome to people and they say how how can I change the layout I say I say you have to install a separate utility to change it and they were like what why why it's so why it acting so weird yeah but that's that's what we have for today <laughs> huh I uh, yeah I I haven't uh, messed around with um input layout stuff in a little bit I had it working back when X eleven but not working... Oh, but I haven't set it up on on Wayland. Mm-hmm. Huh. I... <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure. I, I, yeah. I use... 
I think that the like, key I I think I had used super space when I was using super space. I think, yeah, I think that was the default in FCITX. Um, huh. <laughs> that's dumb that's really well, dumb many people come from windows on windows the default option is alt plus shift and mm -hmm. people expect alt plus shift to work on linux but it but it doesn't and if you use in wayland so uh, gnome and wayland acts, still acts a little bit weird so uh the um, little icon that shows you the current language layout it still shows it it doesn't switch when you press alt alt shift on linux if you set it on the on the tweak menu on mm -hmm. the gnome tweaks menu but it's fine it's fine because uh, I understand that I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to bash GNOME developers for little bugs because they are doing great job. They they made a desktop environment that mm -hmm. looks great, that works fine, or so uh, it works actually great. But some things should be ironed out for uh, to make it even more popular. And I'm grateful to them. I'm grateful mm -hmm. to what they were able to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Gnome is in this position where it's been the default on a lot of distros for a very long time because mm -hmm. a big part of the reason is KDE's just been... Firstly, it's been very difficult to package. Like, KDE has yeah. a lot of... A lot of pack, like individual packages, whereas Gnome has a yeah. lot more of the big blocks of everything. Also, the KDE release cycles just not existed like there's just not been mm -hmm. a release cycle for kde uh whereas gnome has that six month release cycle that you know yeah. is perfect for things like ubuntu and fedora and kde is trying to resolve that and i hope that as they do that as they get these issues ironed out more distros at least consider it as an option because also kde had an issue where like this is the other part of the release model where the app, I think it was the applications and the libraries were on a different release schedule. So you would have an updated version of the apps, but the libraries would then need to be updated with like a minor release afterwards to make sure everything's up to yeah, date properly. Yeah. It's, it's a nightmare. Well, uh, the other problem with KDE that it looks, uh, it looks, no offense, but it looks like it was designed by programmers. I mean, uh, you have to really tweak it to make it look really great. The default mm. KDE experience is not my cup of tea. The other problem with KDE is, my understanding is there is like four different styling engines being used in the yeah, current yeah, version yeah, of KDE. Yeah. Um, there is a there was a talk that happened at Academy last weekend. Um, if you can find it in the forty hours of footage without timestamps. Uh, <laughs> I think it was um I think it's called Union the Future Styling on KDE, where what they're basically trying to do is create a central point of truth for their styling engine. And basically all the KDE apps are just gonna pull from this, which uh -huh. obviously short term really is gonna be yeah. an issue, but like long term, once all of the apps are ironed out, yeah. once all the apps are ported, it's effectively going to be like Libid Waiter, but KDE also keeping a lot more of the customization that you expect from KDE. Also, it should... Yeah, that would be great. Uh -huh. It should alleviate some of the issues where you have certain KDE apps that are respecting styling, but other ones that are not. It If everything's pulling from the same thing, it should be easier then. Yeah. Should be. But... Uh... There is one thing that I like about KDE that that doesn't uh, that there, there is no such thing on GNOME is global menu. I love the way uh, the global menu looks. I love the way global menu works, and the GNOME has this top bar that is mostly empty. And it would be I would be extremely happy to see the global menu on it. I think it's not coming on GNOME, but nevertheless, and KDE has the global menu, and it and it looks great. It works great also. There have been uh, extensions to do global menus over the years, but I don't think there's an extension. No, not yet. Not right to, now. It doesn't work today. Yeah, it's not working properly, and uh, most applications doesn't support it. You just have the blank yeah. page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. You need yeah. you can make an extension, but you then need apps that are exporting the menus so they can be populating it. Because I think... The extensions would work with some of the older GNOME apps and like yeah. the GTK during GTK three, yeah, yeah. I believe they work yeah, yeah, just yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if you're running like some KDE apps, but the modern GNOME stuff, I don't believe exports stuff to work like that anyway. So you can't do it really. 
Sure, yeah. And the GDK3 apps, some of them have a uh, menu on top of it already. So it yeah. will it will um, display two menus, which which looks weird. Yeah, yeah. 